guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting green to episodes 3 and 4 of the Wadi Managatari. So let's go ahead and get started with episode 3 in 3, 2, 1, go. You say that though, but like, I mean, but still. See, looking at this opening, I mean, I'm either getting one of two things. One, she has a twin, or this girl got like multiple different personality disorders. Maybe. I don't know. But like, I. I'm more on the twin thing because it kind of makes the most sense. But I don't know. I got nothing to go back on that. Maybe like her and her sister like to play you like really harmful pranks on people. And because they look very similar, they like to switch and use each other's names. But no, if he, if she did have a sister, we probably would have found out something about that last week in the first two episodes of Owadi. But because we're still in the same arc of Owadi, but we're in a different opening. Who knows? But lay down. Alright, all right, I'm going to pick you up and I'm just going to put you on the bed. That's all. On the bed. Yeah, I know. That's like the weirdest thing to be reunited with, with someone who just talked about it like before. And out of all the people, it would be Okra. But I mean, but still, like to me, Okra doesn't seem that bad or like bitchy or anything. I was thinking like I automatically, like I wouldn't think I'd like her or anything. And I honestly do like her. She seems interesting. Why does that look like a fucking muse? Hmm? Oh my god, baby! Oh god, oh my god, you are so cute! Yes! Oh my god! That is worse than when me and him freaked out over baby Hanukkah, because I mean, my god! <laughs> Yeah, but you never know. I mean, she could have, like, oh, God, I don't like that face. I mean, she hasn't seen you in two years. She still could have bad blood. You never really know.
Honestly, us. Okay, let's see how that goes. You get tense as fuck, right? <laughs> Well, her possibly not. Oh, okay. But seeing you, all she really did see was hatred. So, I mean, I wouldn't call you a hatred person. The letter.
So were you saying she wrote the letter? Because of course she has has something to do with this. That depends on- oh, Jesus. Oh, shit. Wait, send Johanna. Wait, send Johanna. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, it's all a big misunderstanding. Oh, God. Yes. Are you sure? Because if y'all about to fight, do they need to go outside? Okay. <laughs> Wait, did you really need to slap her? Oh, she about to punch this bitch. Damn, girl. She's best girl. Oh my god. See, we don't slap. That's a bullshit. <laughs> we just punch. Like, yes. Oh. What if the letter was a. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna say this, but I, I really don't think this is in the letter. What if the letter is a fucking love letter or some shit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, open it now. Yes, open it. Um, I hate brain teasers. Are you fucking kidding me? That's a love face. Yeah, it, it would be something. I, I, I can't even believe they're using like Powerpuff Girls up in this ish, but. <laughs> Mm 
the day that you see fucking Professor Utonium with blonde hair, what the fuck? Maybe you should go there. Because mm -hmm. that's something close to your answer. Oh. What are you doing? Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm still I'm I'm still gonna keep my twin theory until I get my answers. Cause I swear to God, if you find someone who also looks like Okra, I swear to fucking God. So someone lived there, maybe. Well, sh okay. Remind me not to tell, make you come with me if I want to go break into something. Shit, because you make noise. We trying not to make noise. Like, what if you wanted to go break into a bank? You can't invite her. Like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My picture parents are like those typical types of cop parents. Okay, that makes sense. Seriously? I would literally hate to have cops as parents. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's something else entirely. Because mm -hmm. that didn't seem strange to you. I mean, it's so strange at all. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think she could look at that teacher again.
Dude, I think barely anybody will remember their elementary or middle school years. Shit. I remember most of them, not all of it. Yeah, I Yeah, you might as well go ahead and explain that. Y'all ain't contact no fucking spirits or some shit, right? At the castle, too. I mean, not a castle, fuck a mansion. Okay. So, okay. Mm. I don't even know what to say about this episode, but I mean, honestly, I really like <laughs> Okra. I mean, even though she seems a little bitchy, yes, her hate for poor Aganagi, I get that because, um, you know, it, it, <laughs> it is what it is, but she seems like a very interesting character, but. I'm hoping that, like, everything he just talked about in this, like, last three minutes of this episode, they do go a little more in detail on the backstory between these two and to know what all transpired five years ago and what else all this possibly could mean. I know we're not even halfway done with this show, but still, it's only episode three and you're leaving me with a lot of more questions and answers. I mean, typically, like, with this show in a nutshell, it's like that, but it's not in a bad way. It's more in a good way because, you know, eventually, by the time you get either halfway done through the series or almost done with the series, you're getting questions answered from not only old series, but also new. So then you're like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense for this. And then why they said this for this, and yada, yada. And that's why I really, truly love the show in a nutshell. But yeah, I, I just, oh, God. But with, with, freaking Oshino's niece now it makes sense with her job in a way a little bit not too much because I still have questions on her of course because I still don't trust her ass I mean even at the beginning when he's like yeah don't mind you know Oshino's niece and I'm over here I'm like but you know that's the same thing with you know <laughs> the previous arc with my best girl and I was just sitting here like I know it ain't gonna be 100% about her but she's still in it and I still gotta care about her cause she's my best girl and shit but bruh I can't I mean it, it's still so weird how you go to the first two episodes they were talking about his backstory with her and then she comes back in episode two and I mean just hell her stabbing him with a freaking pencil like oh god mm -mm. Like, ugh, that's, like, worse than stabbing someone with, like, a screwdriver or literally anything so sharp that you can just go and force, like, I, I can't imagine that. I mean, I've seen it in movies and TV shows and shit, and I mean, yes, they gotta put all, like, that makeup, CGI bullshit on that, but, like, actually having that, I can't imagine, like, oh, God, mm, -mm that just ensures <laughs> my spine, but ultimately, I'm really excited to know what the hell happens in this next episode. It seems like... 
I don't think they want to, they probably contacted something, but the way the room looks, just the, the eeriness that you're feeling while you're watching the episode, especially those last few moments, it seems like y'all did something y'all wasn't supposed to do, and this is not, it's not finding out what the fuck you did, which is wrong. This is gonna be, like, some type of, like, um, Anytime when I watch a fucking horror movie or like, no, mm, anytime when I watch a movie, a horror movie where they contact like spirits using the Ouija board, some shit. And I'm like, and then everybody's like, we have to use the Ouija board. I'm like, no, the fuck you don't. You don't have to do this. No one else has to get killed if you just stop using the goddamn Ouija board. None of this would have happened if you stopped using the Ouija board. Shit like that. So whatever the fuck you did, none of this would happen if you didn't do this. But you know, whatever happens, happens. Everything that they did five years ago is led to things that are happening currently right now. It is all like mathematical time the shit. <laughs> so I should say yes. All right, go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode four. Okay, episode four in three, two, one, go. Be a little more happy. Okay. On this new and motivated. Maybe a little happier. Okay. Formal. And a cutie. Really? 007 up in this bitch? Mm-hmm. Of course, any child would be. Uh oh, okay, never mind. So now after seeing that, it seems like he's that type of child, children, child, um, in a way who puts pressure on themselves, especially with their grades and everything. And I mean, I think a lot, I can't say for a lot of people, I know I was like that in high school or really more of elementary school up until high school. I was like that a lot because of the fact is, um, my parents, really, mainly my mother, because the fact is, like, you know, if you got a bad grade or something like that, there are some parents who are like, hey, it's okay, do better. My mom is still like that till this day, where it's like, yeah, you can do better, it's like that. But I've met some of my friends' parents who, like, lash the shit out of them. And sometimes the emotions of a parent can follow into your child. And so he's very, he seems like he was very hard on himself. But I, I mean, like, for me, I have been hard on myself for some of the stuff that I've done, but I haven't been like, you got, like, I've seen people go that shit nuts. Like, my parents have never done that. Thank fucking God. But there's some people, some people in the world, adults who go way too far on their fucking kids. And that's a whole nother story in a nutshell. And I, the worst thing that I've seen is like someone literally getting their ass whooped, and it's just like, why? Don't go in there. Too late, you're already in there. Oh! No. It's so good to go upstairs. Mm. Something about this shit ain't right.
He's so fucking cute. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's so precious. Oh my god! Oh, stop! But we know that mysterious girl is Hawka. So why don't you just say her name? Unless it's the twin thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you two to be alone? I'm bored. But why though? I mean, okay. But then eventually, I'm guessing you did. That girl. Ah! <laughs> you did ask her about her name in her life. You had to. Yeah. But she wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Like she was just like a ghost in your life. But it can't be. Oh, Christ. But she wasn't there. So she was scared. Well, of course, you didn't know her name. I wouldn't go back to that house either. That's got to be why she.
Okay. Yeah. Who else would it be? Like I said, unless she has a fucking twin. But there's no way in hell she has one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that has to be the reason why she extremely hates me for it. Not for the shit that happened in episode one and episode two, mainly because she forgot her. I mean, in a way, she seems just important to you as Sajada is. Not as much as Sajada, but you know. But still. Probably not. I mean, but it is a smart thing to do. And you just have to deal with the consequences. Yeah, something about that. Every single time you say that shit. Of them being cops?
-hmm. Exactly. Which you shouldn't have, but you did. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, I mean, I figured that out. I mean, that was obvious. That's why she asked you to not ask about her, not her name, not to look into her family because of her background. Parents, your parents are cops. Yeah, your parents, they're cops, and they would know certain things. Mm -hmm. So that your parents could get her and take her away from this. Yeah, she didn't want her family to know, and then she would have been in trouble. And who knows what her family possibly could have done to her. She could have possibly gotten killed from her parents because of anything that she would have told you, and you would have gotten told your parents. Mm -hmm. She almost seems like you would have been her hero and you would have taken her away from this place. Mm -hmm. I ain't Miss Detective.
Kahden. Yeah. Good question. So then how in the world did she find out so quickly though? Yeah, because I mean <laughs> she probably had her ways. Jesus dog, don't do that. I'm using the one as them. God damn it. I mean, even showing that scene of her in the classroom and then him opening the door and then it's the, you're kind of wondering, is she really there? Is she not? I mean, God, like, I hate that about this. Like, I really want to know now. I mean, mm. and I can't even watch the next two episodes probably to, like until maybe Sunday because I'm going to be busy this weekend. But, oh my God, to know the domestic violence background on her, you would have, like, looking at her, you never really would have thought that, but it, it just seems like the people who smile the brightest, that, like, everyone has their own secrets that they just don't want to share with everybody until it's time or when they think that they're 100% ready to share that with people that they really, truly care about and stuff, but now it just makes sense on why she said, don't ask me about my name don't pry into my life because I like this is that and a third. And I get the fact because in a way she wanted him to save her, to be her hero and to take her away from the situation of what was happening to her family. The fact that she was possibly from, it didn't really, you know, go into detail about her, the domestic violence, but she, I, I'm guessing she had to get abused by either one of her parents or both of her parents possibly. If she wanted to get out so much, I mean, she could have gave more signs possibly, but because of the fact is, um, it seemed like her parents were in a way watching her every move. I've never really, um, I, mm, I haven't experienced it, but like from what I've seen on TV shows and it's like that, they're like parents, especially the domestic violence, they're kind of very iffy about who their kids bring in their house, and da 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 clothes, and yada yada yada, it's like that. But I think if um, her parents possibly knew that Agarayikin's parents were cops, then yeah, 
But it just makes me wonder how in the world did she know that his parents were cops? Because something about that, that he doesn't remember, it's going to get answered in episode five and six. And I hate that because I want to know now. I don't want to wait until next week or like Sunday to officially watch the next episode and be like, okay, that's the reason why. But I mean, it's still like a girl like her, you just never would have thought that. And now knowing about it, I mean, it's really honestly with all these girls in this show, and I've said this once before, because when you look at each and every single one of them, you don't think that they've had this tragic, somewhat bad um, backstory until you get more into the show and into their arcs. And you're like, oh, shit, like, damn, you've had it bad just as much as almost like anybody else or possibly even worse. And that's the same thing that you see in people today, because you think that everyone, not really everyone, but like the people who you somewhat meet, maybe wonder if they have what their life is even though they're not telling you 100% of everything of their life but you're still like curious and you want to know and you're like hey if you have problems about anything you can always talk to me but then you always have people who will say or manipulate the situation and lie about something where you say you know you give your heart and soul out to someone and you 100% trust them and then you find out something about that person and then you you know you have another conversation with them or it's been like a couple of months later and they've never talked to you before, like in a while and they message you out of the fucking blue honestly this is a real experience if you're wondering what the go what the fuck i'm talking about i ain't gonna say who but it's somebody um <laughs> that i know from youtube and stuff um who messages you out of the blue and then you look and you're wondering like do i really want to spend a minute or how how many minutes like giving you the time of day when I was messaging you being worried about you because of the situation you were in but because you were feeling some type of way and you didn't want to talk to me and then it's like why should I why should I help you when I was there for you so many times in the past but then it's like when it's like when you want the help and when it's like you think I'm going to be there for you, I'm not going to be there for you because it felt like you just, you know, you took my the goodness of my heart and you just threw it away. You stomped it on the ground and shit like that. And I, and it's just like things like that that go, 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 you know, possibly be upset with. I got to argue about it. There's so many other things that possibly we don't even know or really that I don't really know. But I ain't really going to find out until I watch episodes five and six. But... Other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episodes 3 and 4 of Awadi Monogatari. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Magic Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys especially on next Friday for Patreon. And next Monday for everybody else for episodes 5 and 6. Bye, guys.